well you better get ready Bow to the masters Break it down! Hey guys, Kyle back from the NVL blog. Hope you're not tired of my voice quite yet because I've got no Remy alongside, but I do have Chuck Norris along with us. Let me find one good fact for you. Um, Chuck Norris does not wear a watch. He says what time it is. So there it is. Um, by the way, I'm really proud to be wearing my Boise State, uh, Boise State Kellen Moore jersey for this video uh, and the last one and the Game of the Week video coming up. Um, big fan of my boy Kellen Moore out in Boise, so hopefully they keep it up. Um, anyway, enough of that uh, razzmatazz. We'll go on to our week three predictions uh, and previews. We've got some interesting games. Um, we've got some really big headline games that we'll get to soon. But we'll start off here. Uh, a bunch of Friday night games. No Thursday night games for the first time this season, so we'll have to wait all the way until Friday uh, to get underway here. We'll start off with Wilby at Watertown. Both teams, um, or excuse me, Wilby is 1-1. One and one. Uh, Watertown is 0-2. Oh that game Friday night, 7 o'clock, up at Watertown High. Uh, keys to this game, which team's rushing attack wins out? Anthony Avaletta has been very, very good for Watertown in his new role this season. And as I said in the last video, Jalen Mahan... Uh, and Jacob Thomas have been excellent for Wilby, both rushing for over 100 yards in the Wildcats' first uh, two games. So which team wins out? Um, Wilby has a lot of speed. Watertown has a lot of size. Um, you know, we'll have to see. It should be a pretty interesting matchup. Um, neither team throws the ball a whole lot. Watertown throws a little bit more uh, than Wilby, but I don't think the passing game will come in too much in this one. Um, Wilby has played um, fairly well on defense so far. Obviously the shutout against Kennedy, but uh, only giving up 28 points to Lyman Hall, um, which really was sort of a, a misnomer as the, that fumble gave up uh, essentially the last points. Um, so the Wildcats come in here, and we'll see what Watertown can do. They had a pretty close game with Montville, and then they um, stick around for a little while with Holy Cross before fading out. So. Uh, Remy and I, actually Remy and I agree on all of our picks this week, so I will maintain a one-game lead no matter what at the end of this week, but both of us agree. I've got Wilby 28-21, he's got Wilby 29-16 over Watertown uh, up the Mills Complex, so should be an interesting game. That one probably should be close either way. I don't really see either team blowing another out of the water there. Uh, we move on to the only out-of-conference game of the week. Jonathan Law, who is 0-2 in the SCC, uh, travels to Woodland, who is 1-1 one one after the loss to Ansonia last week. Uh, that game Friday night, 7 o'clock in Beacon Falls. A uh, key to this one, the Battle of the Black and Gold. Hawks don't usually get to play a team with their own colors. Um, both these teams run pretty balanced offenses, uh, a good mixture of passing and uh, running the ball. So how does Woodland recover from that uh, disappointing loss last week? They played 15 minutes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ansoni, a nothing-nothing game, and then Arkel Newsom uh, had those few big plays that really looked like it took the wind out of the Hawks' sails. And uh, for Jonathan Law, um, a close game a couple weeks ago against Sheehan, uh, a bit bigger of a loss last week, so both these teams looking to, to rebound here. Um, should be interesting what Woodland can do. Uh, Class S they're in. It should be probably fairly open at the end of the season, but this win uh, would help uh, for that cause. Um, you know, we'll see what Tanner Kingsley can get back on track. He was a little off on his throws on Friday night. Really, uh, nobody played well on offense. The varsity only had 97 yards against the Chargers, so we'll see there. Both of us have Woodland. Um, I like the Hawks to bounce back at home. Uh, and if you go into a two-game losing streak here, um, you know, w with those tough stretch of games coming up with the, the Copper Division, just one after another should be pretty good games. Um, they want to get back on track right now, and I think they will at home. I've got Woodland 21-14. Remy's got the Hawks 27-12. We move on to the other Friday night game uh, that we're going to highlight in this video. Kennedy is 0-2. They will go down to Seymour, who's 2-0. The Wildcats finally get their opener at DeBarber Field. And the key to this one, can Seymour play uh, a cleaner style of football than they did last week? Very sloppy. Luke Rabowski had three uh, interceptions. A lot of penalties uh, for both teams in that game against Sacred Heart. Um, so if Seymour can clean it up, I really don't think this one will be a game. Kennedy, um, 
you know, they played with Wolkett in the first week, which now looks like sort of a wash of a game after what the Eagles showed last week against Torrington. Um, and then last week, uh, Kennedy is shut out by Wilby, which is uh, should be a good defense, but not a great defense. So I think Seymour should probably have their way in this one. Um, you know, we'll see what sort of balance that the Wildcats can bring. Uh, I like the Cats 35-12. to Remy likes them in a bit closer of a game, but still a fairly comfortable 26-17. to He likes Seymour. Uh, we move on uh, to the Saturday games. Naugat up 2-0 after uh, the very tight, very close, very exciting win against Derby. Uh, they head up to Bristol uh, at St. Paul, who's 0-2, and the Falcons very possibly have looked the worst out of any team, um, at least among the worst, uh, in the first couple of weeks of the season. They stuck around with Crosby last week before the Bulldogs opened up a 20-point win there. In the previous week, Derby just threw all over them. Um, so St. Paul, uh, led by, of course, the sophomore Logan Marchi, um, you know, has a little bit of work left to do. He threw five picks last week, so that'll have to get under control. The key for this one, how does Naugatuck continue to cope with the injuries? Sounds like some of these players could be back this week. Um, you know, be, the more the better, obviously. They only had four regular defensive starters uh, in that game, and uh, three out of the four wide receivers that Nagy would usually use were also out of the game. Um, so they had to rely a lot on Jake Uris, and I know some of the fans at the game uh, were yelling uh, at Rob Plasky to throw the ball more, but they just didn't have the tools to do that. So uh, I fully supported that game plan, uh, you know, pounding it away and taking the ball out of Krieger's hands as much as possible. But that was last week, so we'll see if Nongi can bring a little bit more balance here this week as long as that defense uh, can play as well as it did. Um, and now you get those guys who got the experience last week uh, that maybe aren't the usual starters, but they would definitely feel more comfortable here. Uh, look for the Falcons to be throwing the ball a, a lot again this week. Uh, they did a good job defending Krieger. Um, and as long as Nogatuck, you know, stays within its own offense, whether they throw a little bit more this week or whether they get more touches uh, to Mike Jabell uh, or Nick Kosa, um, you know, a little bit something to take the to the pounding off Jake Yorison, who uh, sort of struggled throughout. He made it. I mean, what a great job um, by Yorison in that game. But, um, you know, see if they can take the load off him a little. I've got Nogi 42-14. Uh, Remy's got Nogi 38-18. Final game that we'll highlight in this one, Crosby at Wolcott. Both teams are 1-1. One and one. Crosby has looked better in its two games than Wolcott has in its two. This game, a Saturday night 5 o'clock game uh, at Joe Monroe Field. And this one, sort of the battle for the brass basement. Um, Crosby certainly has some, some potential here. Um, they looked pretty good against Holy Cross when I saw them two weeks ago and uh, had their way essentially with the Falcons last week. A Wolkett had needed a late fumble recovery and a touchdown to beat Kennedy, and then were just walloped by Torrington last week. Um, so Crosby's offense might have some room to work against this Eagles defense. Um, and the Crosby defense intercepted Logan Marchie five times last week. So if Wolkett wants to throw the ball like they did a lot up at Torrington, that could spell disaster for the Eagles. So we'll see if they get to a little bit more balance with Devontae Bonvilli and uh, Crosby. Marcel Lugo has been playing pretty well for them. Uh, he ran three touchdowns the other day. So um, we'll see where these two teams sort of settle in. Again, both of us have Crosby. Um, I've got them 27-14. Rems got the Bulldogs 18-6. to uh, We didn't mention Sacred Heart. Uh, Sacred Heart did not schedule a Week 3 game. What they did was Woodland asked them to move the game uh, that was originally scheduled for this week back to Week 1 so that the Hawks could fill the Jonathan Law uh, slot this week. Uh, Sacred Heart never found a Week 3 game. Uh, SPB down from the post told us um, that they were talking to Greenwich for a little while, but they couldn't fill it out. Um, so Sacred Heart will be without a game in Week 3. Um, so nothing from the Hearts this week. The other two games we didn't mention, Ansonia Derby, Torrington Holy Cross. You're going to have to wait till Wednesday to find out about them. They are, again, our co-games of the week, the two biggest divisional games of the week. The Ansonia Derby was last year's Brass Division a de facto championship game. Torrington Holy Cross could uh, very well be 1-2 in the Copper this year. So uh, big, big, big games on both sides of the divisions. Uh, so those are our looks at the first five games that we'll take a look at in week three. And we will be back on Wednesday to take a look at our two games of the week 
Um, I'm going to record that right now, but you'll have to wait a couple of days. Um, so again, thank you for joining us in these videos. We hope you're all having fun, maybe in the last videos of the season. Um, we'll break out the tuxedos or something, but for now, Kellen Moore does the job for me. Uh, so once again, guys, keep visiting, keep commenting, and if you don't like commenting, like a lot of you have told me that I've uh, met in the last couple weeks, which I love, by the way, so keep on, keep that coming. Um, you know, keep it up. We've got polls always going in the right sidebar. We've got everything you need right here. So thank you once again, guys, for coming. Follow us on Twitter, at NBL Football and at Kyle Brennan one We will always have the updates from the games, and you can follow live scores on the blog in our live scoreboard every weekend. So once again, thanks for joining us, guys. Take care, and we'll see you on Wednesday.